Hello, this is Dan Pro. Welcome to part 7 of my rigifying tutorial series and we're back to rigging our biped character Eve. Now, um, previously I mentioned that I was going to ramp this up a little bit and add uh, quite a few more bones um, to my meta rig and uh, uh, bring this kind of to an another level here. So you can actually see I've actually went ahead and added the Pidgey facial rig here so I can actually control the eyes and uh, the jaw and things like that. Now, um, I, I will show you how to do this. Um, but it kind of becomes muddled a little bit at this stage right now um, because what I really want to focus on is mainly uh, my workflow and then the tools that I use um, uh, during the different stages of my workflow. So I think that would really be more beneficial rather than try to give a step-by-step -step, um, tutorial. Uh, it's really just not possible to do a step-by-step -step tutorial at this point um, to show you that you need to paint um, exactly this value here or there on one of the deformation bones to get a a good deformation um, but what I can do is show you the tools that I use and the techniques that I use um, um, to get to a finished state so uh, I think that's going to be more beneficial and as well as uh, just giving you general guidelines on what you should focus on first um, so uh, you don't end up redoing work down the line so I actually have um, a little uh, list here of things that I I tend to um, uh, this, this workflow that I, I stick with and I, tr I try to adhere to. Alright, so stage one. Basically everything we're going to do in stage one here um, is really going to set the foundation for all of our finishing uh, things that we finish in stage two. So basically stage two is, is all going to be about uh, finalizing everything and uh, uh, bringing everything to a, a done state. But we really need to um, have a solid foundation first in order to uh, work from. So Basically, these are just things that I've come up with. Um, they're not hard and fast rules. They're just things that I've uh, uh, things that I've come up with to uh, help myself. Uh, mainly, like I said, uh, one get the project done, and two uh, set a foundation, and three uh, avoid um, having to redo work down the road. So the first thing is rig generation. Now we've already generated a rig, um, but at this point, I've actually generated almost uh, I think a dozen different rigs for Eve at this point. So I keep uh, refining it and keep adding um, new features to it. You can see I actually have a way to um, manipulate the hair now, and that wasn't possible before. And I'll show you how to add that here later. I actually have quite a few different rig layer buttons that I um, had added, and uh, uh, Rigify is generating these buttons for me and placing them uh, in the stack here. So I have I can turn off those hair controls or uh, these. Uh, different facial controls and things like that. Um, so those are the kind of things that I really want to talk about now. Uh, getting our rig generated. Now there's a lot of things I used to get ticked off when I had to regenerate a new rig and uh, that's understandable. I suppose everybody's gonna run into that uh, to some point but I've actually just made this part of my workflow. Uh, I just kind of right now um, like I said, it's part of my workflow. I actually expect to have to do that. So I'll generate a rig. Um, if something doesn't look quite right, if something's not bending quite right, I'll just go back to my meta rig, uh, change the roll of a bone. Let's say a finger is not bending um, correctly. If it's uh, the roll is uh, out a little bit, so it's not bending straight. Uh, if it's kind of crooked to the side, I can just go back to my meta rig. Um, change the role of that bone, generate a new rig, and I've really not lost any time. Now it's possible to go in there and uh, manually change a lot of the bones and things uh, in the rig. Let me just go back to, let me just turn on all this stuff here, on all the deformation bones and all the mechanism bones and all this stuff. Like if I needed to change, um, let's say where this joint is here, uh, where the shoulder, it's actually really difficult to go in here, go into edit mode and take all of these points because they're all pretty much lining up and then move them. And uh, the other thing is you'll a, a lot of times there will be stretch due constraints and things like that are all dependent on that point. So those will have to be reset. So like I said, it is possible to um, fix all this stuff after the fact, but it's far easier just to click the generate button and have Rigify do that by uh, resetting a position in our meta rig. So if that bone wasn't correct and I needed it to be shortened and I could just move it over here, generate a new rig, that's what I'm going to do at this point. You know, I want to go through and make sure that I'm testing everything um, and making sure that 
gen uh, Rigify is generating uh, a rig for me, and then I have everything in the meta rig correct, so Rigify can generate a good working rig. So I'm going to generate as many rigs as needed. I really don't worry about how many times I have to do it. I'll just keep adding uh, things that I need and keep testing it, and I don't modify uh, the inner workings of the rig or the rig script at this point. And the reason for that is, is if I need to f uh, fix a finger bend or something like that in the meta rig and generate a new rig, I don't want to lose that um, work. So I don't want to have to go in there and re-modify that rig to get back to what I had before. So I hope that makes sense. Like I said, I want to make Rigify do as much work at this point as I can. Um, but something I can do, uh, even though I'll be um, deleting multiple rigs and regenerating new rigs, I can customize the widgets. And as long as I don't delete those widgets, and those widgets will be on this last layer here, and this is what I'm talking about, if I actually went in and uh, uh, edited uh, the size or something like this uh, for one of my widgets, uh, as long as I don't delete that, um, Rigify won't uh, generate a new one and overwrite that. So I can actually uh, modify a bunch of these widgets and I'll I'll show you how to do that in a later tutorial. But uh, that's something that's safe to do now and some something that uh, won't lose us a, a bunch of work. So, Alright, so that's uh, part of stage one. Again, generate generate as many rigs as we need to make sure that everything is going to work. Uh, test every single control and make sure that everything is going to bend correctly. All of our IK, FK controls and things like that are going to work. Uh, I'm not going to modify the rig or the rig script, but I can customize the widgets. Now, also part of stage one, uh, mainly what I'm going to focus on besides rig generation um, is weight painting and topology. So if I need to make, uh, I want to do multiple weight passes, uh, weight painting passes and keep refining that. Um, if I need to make topology changes, now is the time to do it. Uh, at the stage one, I don't want to get into stage two you know, when I've, after I've made uh, shape keys and things like that and find out that I need to make a topology change. So weight painting and topology, this is the time to do it. Time to make sure that all this stuff works with the way our uh, rig is generated and the way our bones are placed. Um, like I said, test 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 if we're going to re redefine our topology it needs to be done now or should be done now uh, to in order to just save some work down the road um, i will actually oftentimes make multiple copies of the mesh that i'm working on and uh and i get into that and the reasons for that a little bit later um, the other thing i want to do is use my weight transfer tool so if i'm weight painting my body mesh i can actually transfer those weights to uh, my clothing mesh like for this example I have uh, underwear mesh for Eve so I can actually um, transfer those weights over so I don't have to weight paint that clothing mesh or the underwear mesh in this case I can use those weights from the body mesh and transfer them and uh, basically save myself a ton of time with needing to uh, weight paint that uh, separate mesh uh, again basically so with basically just a little bit of touch up I can transfer those weights up trans uh, touch it up a little bit and uh, save just a ton of time so that's what I'm going to be doing uh, in this early stage as well so and of course I'm going to test um, my weight painting and uh, over and over and over and along with uh, testing my rigs and my rig controls and th things like that I'm going to make sure that uh, I've got that solid foundation um, to, to work from so I want to get through stage one as easily as possible or as quickly as possible um, so I said I'm going to concentrate on showing you some of those tools and techniques um, to get through that stage. Things I want to avoid at this early stage are things like UV unwrapping. So uh, this is the Eve mesh in the this Eve um, file here was actually got I got it from Blendswap. So she was actually already UV unwrapped. Now for my workflow, I usually don't spend that time to do that at this early stage because if I need to make topology changes. Um, basically that UV unwrapping is, is being broken. So I know a lot of people like to use, um, uh, they'll sculpt their mesh and then they'll do a retopology and then they'll start working on uh, UV unwrapping and materials and things like that. I like to avoid that because I want to make sure that my mesh is going to deform properly before I ever um, decide how I'm going to unwrap it. So uh, like I said, I'm just basically trying to keep from having to re- do work. Now if you have already have a UV unwrap mesh and you've already uh, spent all that time working on your materials and your UV unwrapping and things like that, you probably aren't going to want to change your topology like I'm doing. So just want you to be aware that uh, this is, like I said, it's not hard and fast rules. It's just um, 
things that I've come up with um, to avoid work down the down the road. So you won't be able to use some of the techniques that I'm going to be using if you've already UV unwrapped and you don't want to re unwrap um, your model. So another thing that I want to avoid at this point is shape keys because I'll often be switching between a mirror modded mesh and then applying that mirror mod um, just so some of my tools like the weight transfer tools work better. Um, again, I don't want to use any shape keys because that's actually going to change the basis and that will break our shape keys. So I avoid shape keys at all costs at this early stage and it's, this stage isn't really going to take that long so don't worry about it. I know it's probably takes longer for me to explain it than it, it does to actually do it. So um, another thing to avoid besides UV unwrapping and shape keys is making my mesh overly dense. I don't want to apply um, uh, subsurf modifiers and really make the the mesh dense at this point. Now even if I want uh, a dense mesh at for an end result, if I need it for some reason, um, I want to keep everything as simple as I can for as long as I can. Now uh, again back to the weight transfer tools, I can actually transfer tools from a low poly um, undense mesh to a higher poly mesh and then save that weight painting. Uh, it'll just do a lot of work for me. So it's, it's always, I always try to keep it, try to keep my meshes that I'm rigging as simple as possible for as long as possible and there's really no reason to make a, a very um, dense mesh these days not with um, all the different techniques you can use uh, like bump maps and normal maps and things like that to simulate and uh, fake um, high density details so there's, there's no reason to make a high dense a very dense mesh um, and it's just going to work better it's going to be easier to weight paint and it's going to be easier to unwrap it's going to be uh, it it just kind of go. the list goes on and on. It's just far easier to work with. It's going to work better in the viewport. So the less dense your mesh is, uh, keep it as keep it as simple as you can. So like I said, you can always fake details in a different way with materials and uh, normal maps and things like that. So uh, another thing that I really want to concentrate on this early stage is, is I want to make sure that I've got a well-defined goal for my character and rig. I need to know what I'm rigging for. So if I'm doing a background character that's basically just going to be able to walk and maybe look around a little bit, I mean that the workload is going to be far different than if I want a main, main character that's going to need full um, facial controls and things like that, uh, be able to pick things up and uh, have that kind of functionality in the rig. So you need to have specific goals. You need to start thinking about that. that uh, what the end goals are going to be at this early stage. Now we're probably not going to add all the things to uh, make all that stuff work, but uh, things like um, like these um, hair controls right here. If we can add this stuff at this early stage, like I said, um, let me just turn these other ones off here. Alright, so if I can add um, controls for this hair, uh, at this early stage, now is the time I want to do it. Um, just because, uh, gen like I said, Brigify will generate that stuff for me. So, well defined goal. Um, a few things that we can do, um, whether we're in stage one right now or stage two, is we can keep organized. So, I always keep notes for every one of my rig files, and it's just easy to go back and look at my notes and say okay I've weight painted the torso area and I'm testing that so if I put my file down for a few days or weeks or even months I can come back look at my notes and just pick up uh, that project uh, from that point so it doesn't take long to take notes um, it's very easy to do then I back up often and I save often and I save new versions often so it's very easy to save multiple copies. If I just go to File, do Save As, you see I've got eRig.009 blend. All I need to do, because I'm using this 009 as my, uh, at the end there, I can just hit the plus button and it'll switch to eRig10. So I can just keep um, incrementally um, saving new files here. So it's really easy to do. Uh, save often, save new versions, and if you want to test new ideas, um, this is going to come more in play in stage two when we get to it. Uh, but it also, uh, if we need to change our topology or things like that, if you're going to make some big changes, it's it's good to uh, just stop, save a new version, and then, like I said, take notes. Okay, if you've figured out there's a problem with the mouth, the inner mouth, or something, uh, you want to make some topology changes, uh, make a new version before you start that. So and then obviously take notes so uh, I think I've beaten this horse uh, enough here so stage one we're going to uh, 
concentrate on getting our rig to generate uh, correctly and make sure everything's going to work. We'll do a little customizers in the widgets, but mainly what we're going to focus on is our weight paint and topology and all the tools and the techniques uh, for that. So in the next part of my uh, this series, I will actually go through and show you how to uh, add to our meta rig so we can customize um, the rig that is generated from it. Until then, good luck.